Here's a story called The Sunflowers. It's not facts, but it's true. Sunflowers, and if you're a botanist, just like zip the lips, okay? <laughs> sunflowers used to be little yellow flowers with small, pretty black faces and short stalks. And they walked around. Now, the thing you need to know about them is that they love the sun. They adore the sun. They're obsessed with the sun. They're like my six-year-old and his switch. They bask in it. They stretch up toward it. They smile and they laugh when they see it. And they cry when the earth turns away from it and the darkness falls. One sunflower, somebody give me a name. Jimmy. I heard Jimmy first. All right. A sunflower named Jimmy was basking in the sun one day, smiling so wide. They smiled so wide, their face actually grew wider. They couldn't believe it, and they were so happy about it. They called all their friends. They were like, hey, hey, everyone, come and look at my face. It's bigger. I've been smiling so much at the sun, my face is bigger. And it's super awesome because now there's even more of me to be warmed by the sun and follow it across the sky. And the flower's friends were a little jealous, frankly. And Jimmy said, just stick with me. Maybe your faces will get wider too. And what do you know? After a few days of straining and smiling so big, their faces did get wider. Now, Jimmy had been wondering, what's the best place to see the sun? How can I be sure I won't miss it? What if I'm walking or I'm facing the wrong direction or I'm not paying attention? I don't want to miss even a single second of looking at it. So they decided, well, I guess I'll just pick a spot and I'll stay there from morning until night. Now, a funny thing happened to Jimmy's feet. They began to turn into a strong stalk and roots, and the roots went down into the ground, and the stalk grew thick and sturdy, and they couldn't walk anymore, but that was fine by them, because by staying in the same spot, they always knew where the sun was going to go down and where it was going to come up in the morning, and they wouldn't miss a single second of sunshine. So after a few weeks of staying in one spot, Jimmy noticed their strong, thick body, and it was getting longer. They were getting taller. When the sun was high overhead, Jimmy strained, strained, strained to say hello. They stretched up toward the sun, soaking it all in and saying hi. And all the other flowers were much shorter than Jimmy by now. And some of them got curious. So they stood right beside Jimmy and they planted their feet too. And they watched their own bodies change their faces got wider from so much smiling. Their feet became roots, and they grew a sturdy stalk. And because their roots were deep and the stalk was wide, they grew upward closer and closer to their favorite thing. So pretty soon, all the sunflowers gathered around Jimmy, right? They're like, okay, Jimmy really knows what's up. <laughs> so, they, so they formed a big field in these neat little rows so they didn't, like, block each other. And they all focused their energy on getting as tall as they could. Um, making their stalks really wide and strong to support them and smiling so big and their faces got wide, wide, wide. In the morning, their faces look east. And as the sun tracks across the sky, they turn their faces to follow it. Tournesol in French, girasol in Spanish, girasole in Italian. In the Romance languages, these creatures are called sun turners. Sun turners. They are exhibiting, for those who enjoy a little botany lesson in their religious experience, heliotropism. They move toward the light. In Greek mythology, it's the sun god Apollo who drives the blazing chariot across the sky. And before we knew that the earth was round, that the sun doesn't move around us, but rather we are the ones who move, people believed it was the movement of the sun that caused day to turn to night. It is not, however, the sun that moves when we fix our gaze upon it. It is not the sun that moves when we adore it. 
It is us. We are the ones who move. And we are the ones who are changed. The object of our adoration is unchanging, at least for the span of one precious human life. And when we turn our faces toward what we love, we are the ones who change. Building resilient communities in your household, in your congregation, in your neighborhood, in your school district is like this. Planting your very own feet next to one another, a giant field of sunflowers. We don't all name the holy in the same way, but we come together to worship the goodness at the heart of life and to be changed by love, even as we build a more loving world. It is true that there is much to rage about, but it is not only through righteous rage and tending our grief, et cetera, et cetera, that we change the course of history. It is not only through reciting bad news sincerely in yoga teacher voices (laughs) and calling this prayer. (laughs) <laughs> we, know, that one's for the preachers in the room. <laughs> that is not the, the only way to express our devotion. Now, don't mistake me. I'm not trying to sell you like a good vibes only expensive yoga retreat. I'm like really dumping on yoga tonight. I guess. But you know what I'm saying? Like I'm not trying to I'm not trying to sell you like a, a only chill vibes here kind of power of positive thinking nonsense. I live in North Carolina. Okay, we just passed a 12 week abortion ban. We're trying scary, scary shady stuff attacking queer and trans people. Our state legislature is like up to some like really bad stuff. Um, it, like if you can think of it, they're trying to do it, and it's terrible. But in our movements to build the power to remove these absolute fucking clowns from office, we are having a good time. The immigrant-led power-building organizations are registering young voters in line for Bad Bunny concerts. That's where they're finding them, all right? The drag queens continue to tear it up. The unions are dancing on the picket lines. And the best party that I have ever been to in 32 years of like being fun at parties <laughs> is the absolute rager we threw after my mother's memorial service. I'm not trying to sell you good vibes only. What I am saying, though, is that you can responsibly organize your life and the lives of your community around your joy. You can. I can't believe it's been 10 years. <laughs> That's so crazy. Um, Sanctuary Boston, your contribution to the rest of Unitarian Universal. Okay, now I'm going to cry. <laughs> your contribution to the rest of Unitarian Universalism in terms of bringing us specifically joy through music is extraordinary. Your insistence that, like, this is a really good way to do church. (laughs) Even as Matt laid out some of the financial difficulties, um, has had effects that you will not see and that you don't know about in congregations you may never visit. Um, But there are people, in my experience all over the country, who are... um, who are influenced by the way that you as a community orient your life to the spirit through music. And it's extraordinary. So you might just like take that and apply it to your life already, (laughs) which is sort of what like religion is for. But But if you don't already do that, if you don't already do it, and you need someone with letters on the back of their name and a silly short word on the front of their name to tell you that you are allowed, it is actually 
spiritually, ethically, communally responsible to organize your lives and your communities around the power of your joy. I've just done that. (laughs) In the long haul, it is through celebration It is through adoration. It is through gazing upon the sun. Spending like all day, you know, orienting toward the spirit of life. Even even when we are surrounded by death. And through the sheer force and power of love, allowing ourselves to be changed. In these days of celebration, in your momentous evening of many celebrations too, may we hold that truth close to our hearts. May it be so, and amen. I have a lengthy three-part lecture on the difference between joy and happiness, but the hour is late and I'll spare you. (laughs) And instead, I'll remind you of what you already know, what you share with the rest of us throughout our movement, and what the sunflowers teach us, which is that even when the sun hides its face from you, nonetheless, you are made and ready to adore it when it returns. Go in peace. Amen.